for this time. We are ready for okay. We are live. We're live. Look, there's another one of us today. Three. Wow, this is gonna be a fun day. Now what we what? <laughs> I'm going to we're gonna talk a little bit briefly with the crazy girl right here. Um welcome to oh Welcome to another episode of Sunday Bites and Tidbits. I'm Chef Babette. I'm Tara Bennett-Smith. And we have a guest today. Yes, we're going to tell, we call her Joy and we don't dare say her last name. Joy Equimmy. Equimmy. Now, why is Joy with us today? Let us explain. Uh, Do you see our little beautiful we're so glad. Hey, Tom. Good Tom is you. always first. Hi, Tom's Tom. Tom's always on. Hey, Tom. Good to see you. Okay. Well, so. we have some of Joy's beautiful and Pamela Bailey. Oh, hello, but, beautiful sisters. Okay, and but, Tom but, 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 Wait, let's say hello to everyone first. Hi, you. You started talking know, about the but, jewelry. I know, but then everybody started logging in. So we got see how she do me, y'all. She started, then she made me shut up. I didn't make her shut up. It's just jingle? people are logging oh, my in. Jingle? Yeah. Oh, okay. So before we get started. Step I eat. But this is not Step I eat show. I know, but it's my restaurant. It's the opening commercial. Step I eat. Step I eat. If you don't want me, try the Step I eat. 114 North Market Street. Where? In Inglewood, California. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tom says we got to get, we got to get Joy a cute do-rag. Oh, oh. Well, no, we Joy got glamour. Joy, Joy brought us all the. Oh, she brought us. Look bling. at all of our bling. No, we don't need one. Next time, need do, do your curls. No, 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 no. This is a do rag because I didn't comb my hair because I rolled out of bed to get here to the beds, and that's the best I can do. And I just wear do rag every day. So this is it. But we want to talk to you, talk to Joy a little bit about her jewelry. Oh, this is this is some beautiful, beautiful work here, guys. So, so let's let Joy explain what yes, you got going on. Yeah, tell us about what we got here. Because I really this. want you guys to see this stuff. It's I feel like so gorgeous. Pretty. It's it really gorgeous. is. Okay, so talk about it, Joy. Okay, so a couple of years ago, I started making jewelry. Hold it up. I'll hold it up over here, and you can talk. Yes. That so some of you guys it. might not know oh, this, but here? I am a physician, a surgeon by training. And uh, several years ago, I developed a temporary disability that basically um, made me lose my ability to perform surgeries. Around that same year, my mom passed away from cancer, multiple myeloma. And I went into a really deep depression. And to be honest, um, jewelry making saved my life. It really did. I was able to use the skills of my hands to design small details and also to select stones that had meaning um, in terms of their calming effect and combine things, not just for beauty, but create jewelry that had purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I started to create this jewelry and one of my friends asked me, Kenne, hi, if you're logged hi, in. <laughs> um, she asked me to create some pieces for her wedding. And that was my first big project. Mm -hmm. So I made all her wedding pieces and people were surprised and I got orders from that event. And I was like, oh wow, <laughs> you know, I could actually make something of this. And we formed the company called Le Louis. And what does Le oh, Louis you can't mean? Really even see Probably it, over right? here. Let me see. Le, Le Louis. Louis. Yeah. And you know, it doesn't really have a meaning. I just like the name. So you just made it <laughs> up. I just made it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I think someone told me it meant something, but when I looked it up, I couldn't really figure out the meaning. But I really so like the name. So tell them about the pieces that you put together sure. in one strand. What Smart. you've done in this. this. So when I when I started off, people would ask me to make custom You're pieces. Looking at them. They would ask me to make custom pieces for them, mm -hmm. right? And I would sit and find out why they wanted to make these pieces. For some people, they wanted something um, heirloom with a mother daughter set. Uh, some people would create things for an anniversary, a big milestone wedding anniversaries. And I wanted to learn about the countries they came from the month they were born. And I would do a lot of research into what natural minerals came from those countries and I would import them. Wow. Like the Closone beads that are, um, come from like Japan and China. And I would create combinations that people wouldn't usually 
use. And I realized that people would really find so much meaning when they would get their pieces because I put thought into it. And not only that, <laughs> I know. No, they're, they're they're the screen. screen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys, there's stuff going it's on. Dirty. Here. <laughs> But anyway, anyway yes. So I would create these pieces <laughs> and I would actually submit the pieces sometimes with a custom box with the person's name on it. And I would write why I chose the pieces. Like I would choose like hematite, which is like a, a balancing stone mm -hmm. or aquamarine, which is a stone for for um, November babies, but also it's a calming stone. Oh, here's a cross and a bead. It's a uh, metal with enamel. So, and, and also part of one of the reasons why you did it, you're saying because of the, this, the challenge you had, that you created this jewelry as a way to, to, to assist people who have disabilities, how to, or, or give part of the money. Okay, great question. So because my jewelry design came out of me being disabled mm -hmm. and me being um, losing the opportunity to continue as a surgeon, which is something I really, really, really wanted, I, in creating this business, put in as part of my business model, which is like a, a non-negotiable, working with people with disabilities. Mm. We have sought out um, a few organizations. Once we go live, to employ people with disabilities oh. because when it comes to employment, they are a group that is often um, neglected. Mm -hmm. And you know, just because you have a disability does not mean you cannot do anything. You cannot do anything, right. right? And there are things that people can do. Even when you do have a physical disability, there are ways you can work and there are things that can be done to help you gain meaningful employment. So that's what Lelou is about. Lelou is about empowering the owner of the piece and letting your beauty shine through. That is ah. so beautiful. But I tell you one thing, one thing about it, when people do a lot of beads, sometimes they look beady. No, you know, this... beads from the bead store. Right, the right, dollars. right. These are very expensive pearls. I mean, everything is top, top, top notch, guys. And it's not just a bunch of beads. It's when you look at this, the piece that I have on, when you look at it, you sit here and you want to study this yes, piece because it's, because it's just intricate. It's just got so, so many, many little... beautiful pieces to it. And it's almost like each piece tells its own story. Yes. And the clamps, the clamps, clamps. Oh, clamps. all of it. And the whole piece. Yeah, everything is just really, really. So we're going to put her information in there as well. So you guys can get to know her. And, if, and when she launches, when? We're going to have a pop-up shop in December mm -hmm. um, and at, with Etsy. You can look us up in Lelui starting at the first and week of it. December. L-E-L-U-I-X. Okay. Le Louis. Le Louis. I'm Le Louis. Le Louis. Le Louis. Well, we would let's talk with that French. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't no, know. We. 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 Look, un petit. Un petit. We, we. We we gonna bring in our next guest. Oh, our guest. We have a guest today. Now I always refer to this kid as my son. I just she refers to I, everyone. As no, I kid. don't. No, I don't. I don't refer to you as my son. Well, <laughs> yeah, I hope not, because I'd be scared. Anyway, when I first met him, I just completely and totally fell in love with with this brother, and his story is amazing yeah and we're so very grateful to him thank you so very much for for joining us today and sharing the story so without further ado we're going to introduce my son d anthony evans hi sweetheart how are you i am doing 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 fantastic i'm yes, doing great I'm, I'm blessed and encouraged and it's great to be with you it's great thank to be with you, you. Good. Well, we're happy to have you. And, you know, I know so many people that are still logging in as they always do. Um, we always start off by saying, tell us, how did you get started on your plant-based journey? You know, um, I really have to, I have to give the glory to God in the sense that he threw me a curveball that forced me into the lifestyle. But let me back up a little bit. Um, I had an aunt named Lisa, and she was the aunt that would come to Thanksgiving and tell me how many dead things I was eating, right? 
Like you're eating somebody's children. Like I, when I got my plate. Hold on one second, D. Anthony. We're plugging in so we can hear you better. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. You, you can hear me? We got yeah. you now. Okay. So like I was saying, I have a um aunt. Her name is Lisa Michelin, and she calls herself a revolutionary. She's been in the plant-based space for upwards of 25 years, but she was also the aunt that at Thanksgiving, she would guilt you. You come with your big plate and you're happy, look at this chicken and then this turkey, and she'd be like, you know that was somebody's child. And so, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I had a whole plant-based experience for me. It was like, ugh. <laughs> until, until, until I was on my knees January 4th at the University of Chicago begging for help because I had a two-pound mass uh, flush on my spine. What? But I, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So let me back up. I was born Did you know that you had... Oh, okay, go ahead. Go back. But wait a minute. Was it on the outside? It was on the inside, mom. Oh, okay. On the inside. And did you know that you had that or you didn't know what was going on? So this, this is the thing. I was born with the neurological disorder called neurofibromatosis. And you may have heard it referred to as NF1 or NF2. It's basically the disease where they do the fundraiser um, in the underwear. They do the underwear marathons, but our disease causes tumors to spontaneously form on your peripheral nerves. Mm -hmm. So I've been in pain since I was six years old. Ooh. Six years old. I've been in pain over 84% of my body. But also, it causes subcutaneous tumors, meaning they're on the top of the skin, and that made me tumor boy. So not only did I have this disease I was born with, I was hiding it. Like, nobody knew I was sick until I was 35 years old and I was forced to go public with, with my health condition because my community, they was already calling my grandmother, where can we send flowers? We hear Dee is dying. And she was like, if you don't get out there and speak, these people are gonna write your history for you. You gotta say something, Dewan. And, and that's kind of how we went public. But the second week in the hospital, that same aunt, was in the hospital with a, a, a catalog of Vitamixes. She said, look, you're gonna die if you don't re reduce the acidity in your body. All the stuff that I've been telling you, if you do not listen to me, Dewan, you are going to be dead. You have bone cancer. People don't walk away from bone cancer. You have to, you have to start living like me. Now, even with that news, my arrogant, stupid, manly, pride-filled self was still like, man, I, I can't give up chicken. I mean, what are you talking oh, about? Man. I, I was, a, was a power lifter that, that, lifted, that lifted for 15 years, 10,000 calories a day, 40 pounds of chicken breast a month, weighing casein shakes down my throat. Mama, I was 315 pounds when this plant-based journey started. I lost 115 pounds by fasting from meat, dairy, yeast, and sugar. But I went into emergency surgery in January where they removed the first two pound tumor. When that came back malignant, they freaked out and in my disease, everything lights up on the PET scan. So because it only affects 200,000 people, there's really no reference of what to do with me. They just know everything that's large has a higher propensity into converting into a malignancy. So they removed everything that was big. That was over the course of seven, nine hour back-to-back -back operations from January 4th to November 2nd of 2012 on election day. What? I'll never forget it. 225 tumors were removed in that eight month span. Wow. And this is how this journey stuck. Like God put a, a barrel to my head and said, look, Dewan, you're going to change, or well, I'm going to change you. Wow. That's incredible. I wish wow. you could hear this, Doc. I know. I, I know. really wish you could I hear know. this. And if we can get you on, can you get on on your phone now? Okay. Um, well, so keep, keep, let's keep, let's keep talking. Um, well, go ahead. So Continue. go ahead. Okay. So 
because they had just done seven nine hour operations we all know that the body is not supposed to survive after that type of back-to-back -back rigor so they decided to give me a break for december and we're like we're gonna go right back into surgery the first week in january but have fun go through the holidays blah 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 and you know that's when i got introduced to master vegan chef david choi uh, dave is kind of the chef that mentor is famous chefs. He's a Buddhist monk, so he's not into the fame, but he's probably your favorite chef's chef's mentor. Um, I can throw Steve Jobs' name out there, like his chef was mentored by Dave, Phil Jackson, the Zen master, Oprah, the skinny Oprah in the 90s, Dave mentored her chef. And where I'm from in Chicago, you kind of know like, if you get sick and you got money, you're going to kind of go see Dave. Like, at least affluent people, they don't really go to the hospital. They try to heal themselves with food. Um, but I knew also he was going to make me stop eating chicken. So, again, I'm ducking this man in a week span when he's trying to get in touch with me. And I'm dying. And I'm still trying to avoid him because I know as soon as I take his help, I'm done with chicken. This is how chicken had me yeah, brainwashed. Brain I, I am dying and I am feeding. I'm not even, I haven't even taken it away yet. I'm like, but this is going to happen if I talk. And I'm creating these walls and detours for my health because the chicken has my brain. Um, and I, I finally talked to him and he said, I'm not going to chase you, young man. You can write your number and your address on this napkin. And I can teach you what I know or I, I, I'm done. And mm -hmm. I wrote my number down and my address. And that man showed up at my house with 21 plant-based meals, uh, a copy of the China study, and said, I don't want to answer no questions. He was kind of pissed at me. He said, I'm not answering no questions. I know you know it all, Mr. Muscle Guy. I'll see you in a week. Now, <laughs> the, the gentleman I used to be, I, this dude just walked into my house and politely said, don't say nothing. Eat this food. I'll see you in a week. Read the first 54 pages of this book. It took everything in my being to be like, yes, sir. Because my doctor, you know, they were trying to encourage me to go to hospice and things like that. Wow. Um, but I read that first 100 pages and Dr. Campbell starts talking about he couldn't understand why his father had contracted cancer and they they grow their own food on their farm and it just puzzled him until one day in the lab he was playing with casein and whey and he saw how it was manipulating tumor growth in rats now this is a cornell phd that was all for meat and dairy because he was raised on a dairy farm and then he said, I suffered cognitive dissonance because what I was taught about milk and dairy and yeast, even if you when you grow it yourself, it's the pinnacle of health. And he said that my studies and the lab was showing me something completely different. And what I took from that is he made me read that because he knew I was all into the weightlifting industry with the fake protein and the shakes. And he knew that I was going to give him mouth. And I was. I could push 450 <laughs> off my chest. You can't tell me nothing. The old me, you couldn't tell me much. I'm just telling you, it wasn't much. It wasn't much you could tell that dude. I'm glad, I'm glad he's gone. Um, but you know, he came back that following week, and I have been reduced in my spirit to like a three-year-old. <laughs> and I was just humble and I was open. And, and, and saying, I apologize how yeah. we got off the wrong foot. Please teach me. That's and he good. basically kept it real simple. He said, what I teach from comes from a 3,000-year-old Buddhist medicinal handbook that's written in Mandarin. We've been dealing with tumors for three, 4,000 years. He said, the West looks at cancer the wrong way. They look at it like it's an external invasion. When actually everybody is born with cancer cells, mm -hmm. the problem comes when the cancer cells congregate and try to become one. But we all have cancer cells. He said, D, the common denominator in everybody's cancer situation is the acidic pH. 
Now we've mm-hmm. all heard that. I heard that before. I thought that meant drinking alkaline water. <laughs> I'm, <sorry>. you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I was like, I got my alkalinity. I just drank it. What are they talking about? You, you know? And he broke it down. He said, look, dude, from your mouth to your rectum, you got about 30 feet of GI tract. It actually stops in your small intestine, de digest the food, then moves through. He said, but at the end of the day, whatever goes in your mouth has to travel through 30 feet of garden hose that's compressed into six inches. He said, wow. you believe in God, right? I said, I do. He said, so do you think your God made a mistake? Do you think he designed you to eat things that were supposed to maybe turn into liquid when they get processed and fly peacefully through that 30 feet? And do you think he meant to try to pour dirt through a garden hose and, and hope that it reaches the bottom. And I said, no, nah, my God doesn't make mistakes. He's kind of perfect. So I must have it wrong. And this education that this man gave me about visceral organ fat that creates uric acid, like everything that was inside of me that I was calling weight and muscle was actually undigested food. And that was the biggest thing he could have gave me. He said in America, Y'all are in a race to nowhere. He said, chewing your food is not even a discussion. Like, you inhale it. He said, D, if you don't chew your food for breakfast, if you don't chew your food for lunch, if you don't chew your food for dinner, by the end of that day, you have a nice collection of undigested food. Yeah, maybe 70% went, but you retain 30%. And then after eight hours, it starts turning into acid and then moves into your bloodstream, then clogs your artery. Then your penis stops working. He said all the right things. Your penis stops working. Then you probably work up like a penis. The man said, I said, what are you talking about? He said, everything is blood flow. No wind, no flow. And and, and, and I just... the man just changed and converted the way that I look at disease. And what he said was, I don't kill cancer. I don't cure cancer. But I show you how to remove the food that fuels cancer, thus taking it back to undetected levels. I will show you how to live with your cancer. Mm. By killing your cancer, you're saying God is wrong again. You can't understand it, but clearly. How about looking at your life like this, D? Instead of looking at it like a victim, how come God couldn't have picked you to have a mother that died of AIDS and HIV in 1993 when people stopped talking to you when you admitted and she's in front of your high school with a megaphone, condoms, and HIV prevention literature trying to save a generation? How maybe it's God that knew that you lost her the second week of your junior year, dropped out of school, got addicted to drugs, got recruited by a street gang, tried to kill yourself, and through that hospitalization, you got introduced to fitness. Maybe God knew that only you, D, could have had 11 back-to-back nine-hour operations and over 385 tumors removed from your body, the biggest one being two pounds, seven centimeters, on your spine, D. Mm. That's why... You were born to show everybody what resilience is and what not giving up is and what possibilities are. And they will listen to you to teach this lifestyle because you have the tangible life experience, sweat equity proof. And then my whole life, ladies, I hated myself and my body on the inside. I woke up every morning like your tumor boy. And, mm. and that's what and you're ugly. Like people don't tell you, but you got tumors. How can and I I battle with that every single day of my life until I bumped into this situation and God almost took it from me and made my tumors now empower me. That took me around the world wow. by touching every ethnicity everywhere from South Africa to Chicago. We've been with this story and this ministry about this plant-based living. I say all this to say, without my plant-based transition, without this lifestyle and the serenity from releasing all the death from my spirit, he said, how could you possibly have thought you were going to have an abundant life based on something else's suffering? 
How could you mm, ever, that is so you deep. ever thought you were going to be amazing off of something else's suffering and you had a choice? Um, He's like, people have a choice. When you have a choice, that's one thing. You choose to eat death. And then you cry when you die. Oh, my and, gosh. I'm sorry. And, and, and it just, it, it changed me. And, and this is what I'm going to close with just on this little you ain't closing. You ain't closing. You got 30 minutes. You got 30 minutes. You, 30 minutes. you, you better close. keep talking. You better talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, we're going we're to bring out, we're going to bring Joy back when you're done, but you're not done yet. So just keep going. We got lots of questions to ask too. Come on. Come okay. On, so, you know, this mission that you see now and, and people are like, man, how can you live in a fishbowl and be so positive? I mean, that's because I've, I've, I've been probably further in the grave than any other human that's still alive walking around. When you've had, 11 operations and all of them you have to sign waivers to exclude them from any responsibility like basically at some point you're like man they don't know what they're doing and it was surgery for i'm being rolled in and the, whatever drugs they gave me start kicking in they got me signing things on my chest i get to page 13 of my mm. signature and i start tripping i start sweating and I'm like, man, these man, these people don't know what they're doing. Wait a and I minute, wait a minute. They had you signing papers when you're what? drugged up. Drug drug don't up. they give it to like your 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 person? And the, and the doc is over there going, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but she's <laughs> like, she may not be caught up to us yet because she's a little oh, delayed. Okay. Yeah. But they so so they don't give it to like your significant other or the person who signs for you. They don't do that. No, nah, it's on me. I'm the one that's going to sue you. That's how they look. That's how I took it. 13. I was at 13 in this particular situation. I think it was a, a stack of 17 papers. And it's basically a waiver. They didn't want to do the operations because the University of Chicago doesn't do surgery because you want them to do it. They do it based on success. And ladies, they had successfully done the surgery they did on me and nobody lived. I get it. Uh, oh, I understand. Yeah. Hey, they hadn't been successful. Like what I had to do, they sent me to hospice. Like what I had to do to fight for my life was basically be like, look, like I'm not leaving and whatever you got to do. And I kind of guilted my, my doctor, you know, because the part of my story is that it's a pre-existing condition and big pharma and the the insurance companies lobby to get my tumors with my disease coded as molds instead of the conduit to sarcoma. What? Because you have to cover you have to cover that. You have to cover oh, sarcoma. Are you kidding me? Wow. Molds are cosmetic. You right. have to they cover, don't have to cover that. That's plastic <laughs> surgery. Meanwhile, oh, all yeah. of my people are dying because we're expensive. I get it. That head you saw, that's a $4 million head. I mean, I get it, but don't be an insurance company. I mean, all we did was be born. And, yeah. and I mean, I mean, that's that's it. We, we were born, unfortunately, with a condition, but in a country as great as this, I don't understand how anybody slips through the cracks if you got insurance or if you don't. Um, but my mother had learned of a study. This is how resilient my mom was. They denied, denied the surgery, denied the surgery. I was a basketball player. I've been jumping five feet since I was in seventh grade. Like where I'm from, I was the long jumper and the guy that dumped and kind of was like, I didn't have a dad to teach me the ball handling skill, but they knew I was going to get the rebound. I was at least going to give you two dunks that they wasn't expecting. Like I was that guy. And that's what my coach said, man, it's a spot for you anywhere in the world. If you just hustle and be who you are and keep leaping the way you are. So I had this tumor on my knee that, you know, was bothering me. And I always wanted my mom to get it removed. The University of Chicago is doing a study um, where in terms of my likeness and the pictures of, of the tumor, they would do it for free. But my pediatric neurologist, Dr. Townsguard, who I've known since I was six years old, 
he kind of wasn't forthcoming. I was I was 16, so you telling me about neuro? I'm not knowing neuro means nerve. And if you cut something out of my knee, I might not be able to play ball. And I asked him specifically. I said, Doc, if you if you allow if I allow you to cut me, will I be able to play August first? This was sophomore summer. He was like, yeah, it's so contagious, it's minor. And the fact of the matter is I wasn't able to compete. I lost my mom three weeks later. So I lost no. the two things I was waking up in the morning for. Wow. I lost basketball at my mother September 13th of my junior year. Wow. And so as an angry young black man, I was very angry at my doctor because I felt like if he would have been a little more forthcoming, I wouldn't have did the surgery and I could have maybe leaned on my team when my mom died. I'd at least have been on the team yeah, with, yeah. with the team family. And I ended up on the block with the other family. But I'm saying, I, and, and so in my little head at the time, it was his fault. Everything was his fault. Because if you would have told me, you know, I, I would have never did the surgery and then I would have never joined it. And then, I, you know, for some years, I blamed everything on, on, on that man. But I say all this because he rectified himself in the sense of his peers telling him, you can't operate on him. We haven't successfully operated on a two pound tumor that is flush on his spine. Oh. And see, with, with NF tumors, unlike other tumors, they're connected to a sheath. And the sheath is like an umbilical cord. Mm. And for a small tumor like this one on my wrist, that's like a vein connected to that. But it might have originated over here and just presented itself right here. The mm. one on my spine was two pounds. So that, that it was literally equivalent to an umbilical cord, the sheath. And it had wrapped around all my vital organs. I understand why they didn't want to do it. But this man... I said, Doc, I can't die. I can't go to hospice. Whatever you got to do, you guys got to try. And he said, D, give me 24 hours. Longest 24 hours of my life. Um, that phone rang that following day. And he's like, man, I, I, I got some good news. They're going to allow us to operate. But he, he was describing how it was sort of like a, a episode of House. You know, the, 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 the right, right, the yeah. Well, how's be like, no, this is going to work. And everybody in the room is like, dude, you're going to kill him. He said, D, they told me mm -hmm. if he dies, you're done. This is your career is over. This man is like 70 and, and, and his whole life is dedicated to my disease. And he put his whole livelihood on the line, knowing that he couldn't guarantee himself or me that I was going to wake up or any of this was going to be successful. Um, so, you know, that's how I, I say all that to say, um, I got my surgeries and Dr. Townsguard kind of opened the door, um, for the plant-based experience. Like if you see him on my CBS piece, he says, D chose a plant-based lifestyle and came up with a positive result. They asked him if he'll beat it. He says, I'll beat it. That was five years ago. And this is my medical doctor on TV on CBS telling the world that I'm going to be the sarcoma and I didn't do anything he told me to do. I did the radiation, all my teeth fell out. This is all work. I have nothing back here. <laughs> I had 13 root canals in one day. Whoa. One what? day. The radiation made my teeth chip off. They chipped. They didn't fall out. They chipped. Is the most painful thing was worse than the cancer, but I'm not complaining about any of that. You see, I, that, it all sounds horrible, but it's amazing because I know I prevented a few people from taking their lives because they thought it they thought it was just too much. And, and I know that's what my life is about, just being the tangible proof that if you hold on to that palm tree, your legs are going to touch the ground again because no storm is forever. And that's just the bottom line. No storm lasts forever, oh, but yeah. you got to hold on. You mm -hmm. got to hold on. Wow, they're asking, what is your webpage, D'Anthony? Do you have a website or? Uh... I have um, Sharia Inspires, which is my is my nonprofit based after my and mother. And how do you spell that? 
Can you spell that uh, for me? C H E R I inspires dot com or dot org rather. I'm sorry. Um, and that's just a pop up link of me with the kids. But the best way to see my stuff is Instagram, and that's at D Anthony Trains or Facebook um, D Anthony Evans. D Anthony Trains, Anthony yes. Trains, or D Anthony Evans on yes. Facebook. D Anthony Evans. Okay, so right now we're talking that you still have you still you you're not cured. You you function. You're functioning. Now. You're living. I'm, That's I'm, I'm, no, I'll never say that I'm cured. Every day is a diagnosis day. What I'll tell you is um, I haven't had a malignant slide in almost nine years. Congrats. Out of the 300. So wait, I, I got to tell you this little, this little malignancy. This is how we know the plant-based um, lifestyle really changed my life. Um, after they took that break in December, um, and we came back in January, there was fox on my lungs, okay? And and, and that's how it happens, MPNST, wherever it's at, then it metastasized to your lungs and you die. And this is why they had such a, a bad outlook, but they didn't tell me till late. So we get all the way into January and the November slides aren't really matching up with the January slides, but they're not telling me this. We go to the pre pre-operation um, appointment and, you know, doc is telling me, D, I want to hold off and wait a month. Something interesting is happening. Now, meanwhile, I've been gar drinking baking soda and turmeric and all this Buddhist medicinal stuff in, in, in my December break. Okay? I did, if that man would have told me, hey, boil some dirt, me, I would have did it. That's where I was at <laughs> in my <death. laughs> In my desperation, I would, I would have drank any, I would have did anything. I'm not gonna lie, I was scared. And I did everything he said. And then, you know, February comes and he, he, he postpones it again. Now, before every operation, being that I know they're nine hours, I train like I'm about to fight Mike Tyson. Cause I mean, my body, I'll be like, man, every surgery, they kind of play God and bring you up heart rate down to death and then work mm -hmm. on you and then revive you. You only going to play God so many times but your body be like, peace. And, and, and so I, I was like, I got to train. But I was telling the doc, like in February, like, doc, I can't keep training for a marathon that's not going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. I, we need to do something. He said, let's just wait a little longer. Now, this, we had 60 days. But it was an emergency before in, in November. Right, right, right. 60 days. Man, we go into March. He tries to pull the same thing. I say, Doc, check this out. I need to see my slides. He said, well, I, doc, I need to see my slides. Ladies, do you know that the slide from November that had them spots there was nothing on the slide in March. There was That's nothing. Why I can't there was nothing on my lungs. Wow! Nothing. They were waiting to see. They were waiting to see if they would come back. Right. But why yeah. did he just tell you that? You know what he tried to say? It, it might have been some. He said it might have been some mucus on, on your. I said this dude because I've been telling him, man. I met this monk. He told me some things. This man he was telling me there's no science behind it. That's why he couldn't agree with me. Yeah. Because I have been cheerleading Dave. Like, man, the plant-based lifestyle, you doc, you gotta try it. He was telling me I was crazy. He was telling me I was crazy. There's not enough evidence, D. You gotta trust the science. And there's no science on that. But I knew in my heart, I said, wow. Because the thing is, when you have my disease, you know you're patiently waiting for benign tumors to convert into malignant tumors. Mm -hmm. They told me I was going to be fighting cancer my entire life. I've been waiting to do this. But it didn't happen at, at 17, like they said. It didn't happen at 19. It didn't happen at 20. It didn't happen at 30. It happened at 35. So I arrogantly thought I had dodged the bullet. And my lifestyle really didn't play into the equation. I, I, I didn't care. And I sure wasn't, you know, living the way I should be living when you have a condition that I have. And I'll say that that God did all this 
so I could have this wide scale of a story that starts, you know, as a nerd with my mother that kept her foot in my back. Then my structure died. I got swooped up by the street, went through that, tried to kill myself, got my life together, started a company, threw a green concert in Miami, the B scene being green to it. That was me. Um, but I was eating steak. So <laughs> just tell you the hustler, the hustler that made a stupid amount of money, but wasn't living green was I had Lisa Jackson from the EPA at the time, man. <laughs> I was in businessman mode, like, but not caring about the green, but we did the BC being green. Sold out 4,000 seats at the James L. Knight Center. We green, we green, man. And God sat me on my back for that. I spent all that money in copay. You, wow. you can't play with the creator. I'm at four million. <laughs> you can pay on four million dollars. Just saying, just saying, he brought me back from which I come in. <laughs> right. And go ahead. No, no, no. So where are you now physically? You know, like how the how's the pain? Do you is it is it still yeah? So the pain, you know, when you don't feel no pain, you're physically dead. That's about where I'm at. My pain yeah. kind of encourages me, but I, I've created a couple ointments with cannabis. Um that have work wonders. I'm supposed to be on Norco, Percocet, Oxycontin, Neurontin, Celexa, and Remron three times a day forever. So I would be a full-blown dog food head. Um, and if I was on that regimen, I would be in a chair somewhere or in a clinic where I'd have probably moved on to the needle because there's no sustaining all of those opiates. No. And every single that. person I know in my situation is looking for kidneys and livers right now. Uh, see, that's what they've I'm been taking about. it their entire life. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like I still did 200 pull-ups today. Um, I, I'm, I embrace my pain, but I get up every morning and I put this ointment on. My pain does wake me up. It does, at its worst, feel like a wasp is stinging you all the time, or a piece of tin foil was put on a filling. It's that. Oh, oh that yeah. Is a ouch, DeAnthony. Tin yeah. foil on a filling? That's not, it, that does not feel good. No. Nah. You thought of it. It's yeah. like, it's not for us. I mean, we all know what that's like. You're like, ow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So, so you're not on and you don't, you basically what you're using now is your own ointment. I'm using my, yes, using my own, um, Ointment and actually, I'm so messed up that we're actually working to get it um, federally approved the, through the Farm Bill. Um, they passed the Orphan Drug Law or Act, rather, where when you're terminal, because I'm, I'm technically terminal on paper, you expedite all of the drug things. So if you made up your own little holistic, it's a holistic, it's a holistic loophole. But then you can look this up. It's in the Farm Bill. It's called the Orphan Drug Act. And basically, they help and support you getting whatever you created that's giving you relief to bring it to market and license it to other people in your situation um, and give you like a, a, a pharma like like partner to, to support you. That's oh, what we that's were doing good. before COVID happened and it kind of slowed the process yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's really, it gives me, this is what it does. I put it on and I have like a four or five hour window of minimal pain. And mm -hmm. then in like hour four, it starts wearing off. I got, I'll be like, I got to get little. And I, I, this is how I, I map my days out. So anytime we're talking, just know that I have it all mapped out when the pain's coming back. But yeah. Yeah, so, so there's a question from from Suki saying you have an amazing story. What are you eating now to maintain your health? What is your Excellent diet? Excellent question. Like? Excellent question. So um my my I'm not even call it diet, my protein, because everything is fuel and everything for me is about how much what I eat 
has concentrated solar energy in it. Like, I mean, we're electric. Like Dr. Sebi said, Dr. Sebi and what my teacher teach you the same thing. They're just from two different places. But just like religion, if you cover the label and read them, they say the same thing. Right, exactly. And, exactly. and so the protein you eat is based on the concentrated solar energy that is stored as far as what you're going to exert out. Um, and my diet or my, my, my regimen is pine nuts. Um, I do about three and a half pounds, four and a half pounds of pine nuts a day via a, a stew. One cup of pine nuts is 900 calories and 18 grams of protein. Three and a half pounds boiled is equivalent to 14 filet mignons without the cancer, diabetes, and everything else that goes wrong with eating that much calories in a day. And people are like, but your body can't absorb as much. No, your body can't absorb meat protein, okay? Your body loves plant protein because it burns like a firecracker. Mm. It's animal equivalent burns like a candle. So by the time you've eaten the meat again, the, the, the meat that was sitting there hasn't left. And you can never get in front of that, ever. With the plant-based diet or plant-based in your system, it kind of burns as soon as you start moving. And therefore, if you don't move, yeah, that, that sounds like a lot of calories, but they're burnable calories as opposed to calories that sit in your gut and ferment. So to answer your question, I snack on a lot of amazing plant-based dishes, but I look at my thing as the plant-based dishes are the bonus, but every single day I know I have to eat my pine nut um, uh, quota, if you will, to maintain. And see, that's a, that's still a 20-inch arm, and, and, and I, I ain't had no meat in, in almost nine years. We, we yeah. still, and we, hold on, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we still, we still doing it. But and, and with no meat, no dairy, no yeast, and no sugar. Okay. And how do you prepare the pine nuts? Do you stew them? Do you stew it? So, yeah. So, and basically, I'm a, I got a confession. So, Dave had been feeding me the pine nuts. Like, when I told you he came with the 21 plant-based meals that first day, this mm -hmm. man has been feeding me for free for the last eight years. Wow. Okay? Eight years. And what he told me eight years ago, he said, look, you're going to lose the weight. I'm going to make you slim, but you're going to be a powerhouse. And you're going to rise up into the world. And how you're going to pay me back is you're going to do a 360. And you're going to help everybody that has their hand raised, no matter where they come from, no matter how much money. If they raise their hand, you have to help. Them. And that's kind of what you see. And I um, see some of your crazy workouts. You I've got done, some wild got some workouts, man. Stuff. Everybody, you guys need to visit his IG page. He's crazy. a madman, mad, mad, man. mad man. <laughs> and and when you. you let me ask you this: When you're working out, are you ever in? Have, first of all, have you ever it, had a day when you were not in pain? Never. Like, never. Wow. Never. Never. So now it just feels like needles. Like we, you showed us one of them on your on your hand. Like yes. on, like is it everywhere is it, on your body? Oh, all of those are it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. you see all of those? Yes. Oh, wow, yes. wow. Yes. Is it just on your chest, or is it everywhere? It is from my head to my toe and internally. Like that's oh. just what you see here. Oh. Internally. internally, it's there as well, and they grow off of a nerve. This is why it's crazy. Every tumor you see is on a nerve sheath. Pain is my life. It's all I know. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, I'm speechless. That, that, one. that just made me weak. Uh, is the 21-day plant-based meal on your Instagram page, or how can we access the information? Um, no, the 21 plant-based meals was basically his way of healing me through. Right. It was through, for you. It was for me. Right. But, but I didn't even answer the question. The, the, the pine nuts are boiled, um, for upwards of six, four to six hours on a very low heat. And what happens is the, 
the, the juice from the pine nuts come into the water. And then you take all of that and you put it in the Vitamix. Then you blend that and you can either serve it as cups like you would do normal protein, if you will, or you can make eat it with a spoon as a stew. You can shoot it like through your smoothie. If you want it cold, put a banana in it. In. But the, at the end of the day, everything is about absorption. Babies don't chew. And what he taught me is I'm taking you back to your Buddha nature, your God-like sense in the sense that as we get older, we need to get back to our child-like self, not childish, but child-like selves. And he said, babies, they put the food in their mouth, they swallow, it absorbs, it leaves. So what I'm doing mimics baby food. I don't have time to chew. I'm probably never going to chew 50 times. So this works out for me. And I make sure that everything goes down this, this throat gets absorbed. And you don't have no business eating if your body's not really getting what you're eating. Uh, in my opinion, that's well, what you're doing. I'd, I'd like to ask you a question. Now, yes. normally, because I've uh, um, eaten um, live food a lot, I, I understand that generally heat kills. So why the boiling of the pine nuts don't change the molecular structure of the pine so, nut? So, so this is the thing. Boiling is getting the water warm and then you take it down to a low simmer. You don't boil them out, but you get that water so it shocks the nut. And okay. then by the end, end of it, you can squish the nut. But it, it's a very, that's why it's so long. Uh, mama, it's it's like because six you keep hours. The temperature. Yeah, because the temperature is extremely low, and 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 it's it's basically stew. It's crock pot, um, in a in a, in a um pot, but it's not a, it's not a crock pot, but it's basically the crock pot type um theory. And you're correct. So, so no, you're basically, correct with the temperature. You're correct. So basically, you could not just ingest the pine nut. Well, you could if you wanted to. If you wanted to just grab pine nuts and eat them. No. They're gonna be in your. They're gonna be in your. In my granny's word. They're gonna be in your fecal, um, like like <laughs> corn. What if you just? What if, then, what if instead of boiling them? What if? Look, look at me with the boiling. I'm tripping. What if you soak them in water, like I have to do with my cashews or my walnuts or any of my other nuts? I have to soak them so that it basically releases the um, what do you call it? that that gets on yeah anyway y'all know what i'm talking about yeah. so so you actually have to go through this this is the, this is what you were taught i'm very this interested is, in it because i love pine nuts yes but, and, and what you're telling me with the whole protein thing i really want to know i i, I want to try it basically yes but i'm all yeah, messed hey, up but so for, you, to it. for you mama and your training though know? Yeah, it's gonna you gonna it's gonna blow your mind because really? it's gonna be like wow that had all of that in it and I got all this in it. You see how I'm acting, right? <laughs> 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 so that is so. Funny. Somebody said, could you use an Instapot? That is I'm not familiar, but I'm, I'm as long as it's low heat. Long as it's slow, slow heat. Got it. Wow. Well, we are pretty much down to Man. our time before we we're gonna say goodbye to you. This has been incredible. I mean, incredible. you're such an inspiration. You here, are. Anthony. I'm so glad we had you on because you Thank know we you. people go through things. We're all going through something, another, or small, big, large, and you know, so many. When you bring on certain people, it just puts everything in perspective. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That everyone's fighting their own. Whatever. Whatever it is. Right. And right. sometimes we just feel like we're dying because we didn't get the shoes that we wanted or the, right. you know, just this frivolous stupidity so stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And then you hear your story and you go, you know what? I don't even have to have be going through a quarter of what you're dealing with to understand that this journey of ours is this long. I know, you know? And, and he's reminded of his vulnerability every second of the day. day it's like you don't go a second without being reminded 
of who you are and what you are and what you came here to and do and what you came here to do because definitely part, yeah because part definitely. of it is that we don't realize that we all came here to do something, something. but we're yes. so focused on because our thing is not like your thing where it reminds us constantly we're so focused on the irrelevant things that don't really matter you know what right. i did we you get know, so we, we get, get quite you know what i was telling about i did just as a reminder for myself i took a little hourglass out of a game i love that too and i keep it with me and some days when i go when i want to jump on the stupid stuff i pull it out and i hold it in my hand and i look at that hourglass and i said okay what's at the bottom is gone i love it what's at the yeah. top don't belong to me and that, only time hey. i have is that little tiny I opening that. that little that opening that, and that the sand is seeping down and it's only the sand is going down one at a time because once it hits the bottom it don't belong to me anymore i love it, it. don't and belong to you no more so that little sand speckle that's going down that little little that's opening at a time that's my moment your guaranteed so moment what are you doing with that moment, in that moment. who's in your exactly. life who's around you exactly. what are you putting in your body what are you putting in your mind because it's it's all of like you're saying yeah your body is a certain way but your mind had to get right too it's a Absolutely. combination of us as holes you know mind exactly. body it has to be in alignment in order for us to ride this because you could be eating healthy, but your mind could be negative and none of it will work. It goes Correct. together and the workout part of it and making sure we stay fit. Correct. You know? And the sharing. And the sharing. All of it. You have to do it all. But really, right. what you, what this, this brings me, because I have my moments. I have those moments when I'm not in the moment, when I'm <laughs> tripping about next week or next month. Or I'm tripping about right. the 3rd of November. It was the 3rd. Yeah, it was the 3rd of November. It's I'm, September. I'm That's right the wrong No, no. <laughs> I'm concerned about the 3rd of November. But but right now, I'm getting so much just being in the company of these two ladies, being in your company, learning all of this. All of our listeners, people that follow us every, it's all in the moment. And it's yes. all so amazing. And we yes. blow off so much beautiful time by yes. like you said being in the bottom of the hourglass looking or concerned or looking to the top. To the top which we ain't got no control over nothing to do i love the hour we have control. Oh, I love it. you told me that one that's, i love that's that my one. thing now it's like if you don't fit in that little speck of span then you need to get out you of my life you need to get out of my life you need to get out of my life if you make exactly. my life <laughs> aggravating or worrying then you gotta go yeah man. hey let me let me tell you this one like what? so what what i was told is that i'm a candle and that every single candle cannot light up the bottom of the candle there's a dark spot and this is why he said you got to get rid of all negative people places and things he said because on your dark days d they might just take you out he said those people, those positive people that are around you are going to be the ones that shine that light up under the candle that light never sees. And it's exactly what you guys are talking. You guys are influences. You are candles that light up people, but you can't light up what's up under you. And on your dark days, you need that mindset, positive people, places, and things. You need that fitness, and you need that nutrition but working simultaneously at the same time. And that's the tightrope I walk every day because they all, you can't just do one and not the other two or the two and the one. It has to be all of them perpetually to the best of your ability every day. And if you hold yourself to that, you will surprise yourself and unlock some powers you didn't know what was in. I, I got some stuff in me that I know if I share it, they are gonna come get me. Like, cause like, we just man, it's it's, it's just very, very powerful <laughs> energy. Yeah. That's yeah. why I call you my son. I love you. This oh, was wow. this was, this was incredible, too. sweetheart. Thank you so much. Thank and you so much. You now, can stay on. What, now you know you gotta give me the address and everything to the whole Hawaii spot. Yes, tell us about your um. Tell us about your your the, wealth and wellness. The health and wellness. Yeah. We jump. We okay, so in a second. So real quick, um, me. So we've decided to open um, a plant, hundred percent bamboo, plant-based um, wellness retreat, yoga type of thing. That's basically going to teach people how to prevent, reverse, and manage disease through the implementation of the lifestyle. You will learn how to farm. Um, there's an equestrian component. And Mama, what I was going to call you and tell you is that I'm. 
Boom. This is what we're going to do. This is what you call revenue sharing. You're going to bring 12 people, all inclusive, and we're going to split it down the middle. But you ain't going to pay for nothing, and you're going to do Chef Bad Bad in Paradise for a week. Yeah, what I'm ready. When? I'm offering to all influencers that when? have me, that, I'm ready. That have me I'm love. I'm going to take it tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says, I'm going. I need yeah. to know how to go. Yes, yeah. we all need to go. We love you, um, sweetheart. Really, here, too, they got to turn the fan on now. I love we, you. We I love you too. The heat. Mama bring the heat. You know, she comes, she from, from Africa, the motherland, baby. She brings the heat, baby. And every time she comes sit by me, it gets, get hot. It gets so hot. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope everybody enjoyed my son today. I'm so proud of you. Please tell your lovely wife we said hello. Yes, hi. And thank, thank you. you. Tell her thank you for sharing you with us today. Thank um, you. We, we got to be in touch because, uh, yes, we all want to come to Hawaii. Um, yes. Uh, everybody, if you loved uh, D'Anthony, uh, where, can they, where can they follow you, sweetheart? Yeah, and it's also yeah. in the feed. You can follow me on um, Instagram, D Anthony Trains, at D Anthony Trains. On Facebook, it's D Anthony Evans. Twitter is at D Anthony Trains. Um, LinkedIn is D Anthony Evans. I'm, I'm pretty much on every every platform. Um, website, we got it wrapped up in this wellness property thing, and you're going to be able to come to a physical space. Uh, you know, you're not going to need the website. No, the website is coming soon. It's just not built out. So okay, the best way to good. contact me or see me is on those platforms. Well, they know where to find you, and they'll know how to keep up with you. I'm glad that we were able to make the introduction to all of the people yeah. that did not know you. And also, it was so Thank lovely. You. Well, you. we're going to talk to her yeah. just a little bit more because some people who... So we want to say goodbye to you first. Love you, okay. too. Love, on, or you can go love you, too. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye, baby. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye but we're going to talk to, because some people weren't on in, initially, so we want to make sure that they kind of, we talk a little bit more about our beautiful jewelry that we have here today from Dr. Joy. People are saying, hi, Dr. Joy. Hi, hi everybody. Hi, okay. hi, Nodi. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Miss Gonzalez. Oh, hi, dang. You know <laughs> These are her folks. Yeah, well, that's all right. Folks. And we hope you guys have learned something. But let me tell you something. For those who didn't, who were not at the very beginning, and those who are on YouTube and on the other channels, because we got people on so many different channels, um, this is her work. And, and it's it gorgeous. is gorgeous. And, and you see, I'm wearing two different earrings because I want you to see the variations of what she does. Do I have on two different ones? Yes. yes. And, and can you tell them a little bit more about it again? Yes. So this is the fine jewelry design called Le Louis. It's not out in the public yet. It's currently only an exclusive design. So you guys get a sneak peek. Everything is natural, precious stones. Precious stones, y'all. They ain't no junk. And authentic metal. And it's not beads from the, from <laughs> no, the corner. They no, they no, no, no. no. no, no. Mm -hmm. These, this is not plastic beads we are stringing on the kitchen table, child. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> she said not stringing on the kitchen table. <laughs> Right. in a circle and stick the thing to the bead. No. I wish you guys could actually feel a oh piece like God. this. I've had this on for over an hour now. I'm in love with every piece. It's like, I'm like, okay, you know you can't take these. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing, too, is that when That's a pretty piece. I too. love them because even the little, you call them the clamps. The right? clamps yes. are just they're not, not, they're not, you know how clamps are. They when look like part when it, of the jewelry. Right, when it yes. spins around, you got the big old clamp, but not these. The, no. the clamps look like jewelry, so you can't even tell where the clamp starts. And no, it's the beautiful. The, it's cla beautiful. the clamps are intentionally chosen to be decorative. They almost look like they are beads, beads. themselves. Right, right. Every piece is carefully designed it is jewelry for a purpose right jewelry for a purpose and and all of like the pearls everything's just really really beautiful and i'm gonna tell you soon as they put all this stuff on me you felt I was, rich i was mad at somebody early and then they put this stuff on it's me and it all went away i just fell in love with everybody yes because she she intentionally and 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 the story behind it uh for those who missed it uh, was about her having, she's a surgeon and she had a challenge, physical challenge, which, which forced her not to, to, uh, 
to do surgery anymore. And she started doing this as a therapeutic as therapy for her. Yes. But she also wants to, when she launches a business to be able to give back to people with disabilities yes, because absolutely. they're not often hired. So this is something that they can do to make some money and and kind of give back to others. Yes, you know, I, I yes. just love the whole thing yes. about it. And we're going to be using them in some of the films and projects that I'm doing. We we really have to come together and support one another. We yes. really Especially, do. Especially, you know, as people of, of, of all people, brown, all, all people, people, all the people, all the people, <laughs> but especially us, we always need yes. to come together and support one another. So we're very happy to have you thank on today. You. Thank and you. Um, we thank you all for coming in. And oh, but I have something to say. What? So yes. check this out. She's from, now, I, when I checked Ancestry, they said I was 78% african yes so all of my bloodline comes from where she's from and i think we look alike and yes she do. may be totally. a relative of mine what do you guys think it doesn't even matter they're relatives <laughs> because, we said so. because they said they're relatives they're relative. when will your jewelry launch someone's asking great question so leloui was all about empowering people making you feel great and shine through the power of nature through the power of jewelry and so i really wanted to launch it where women could come in and get dressed and just feel good about themselves now we can't do that with corona child so <laughs> <laughs> we have put the launch on hold hopefully to relaunch when everything opens up next year That's towards true. the end of next year but we will have a store open in December so you guys can pick up a piece for Christmas and just shine. Lelouie. Shine. Lelouie. Hey, Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Bye, Tom. Bye, Bye Tom, everybody. Tina. We love you and guys. And remember, Lelouie. Lelouie. We don't know what it means, but it's beautiful <laughs> it's to beautiful. say. Lelouie. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. We have Dr. Baptiste. And remember to check our Bites and Tidbits page because on the 15th, it's going to be at Bridget Bryant's house and we're going to be cooking. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Oh, and, oh, oh, you guys, have added to the recipes I'm about to give Tara tomorrow. We've got, we're have got. we going to make a cranberry cheesecake. That is going. Mm, so make sure you good. get your Vegan cranberries. Cranberry. So we, right now we have the nut loaf. We have the corn. We have something else in cranberry cheesecake. So just bits and pieces. And now you, you, can, now you, do, you can and make sure you get when you get your nuts. Make sure you buy organic nuts. Uh, inorganic and soak nuts. Your nuts. Not you got to soak, got them, to soak them. You got to soak them. You better nuts, go y ahead and soak them, soak them up. nuts. What they better do? Soak, soak them, them nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. See Bye. You next week. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what a fun show. That was fun. <laughs> and it takes me an hour to log out. Look, we'd be on here forever. <laughs>